Hello, welcome back to the desk corner or welcome if you are new here. Today's video is going to be somewhat of a colored pencil tutorial. I actually wanted to show you guys how I achieve the look of skin with colored pencils. Now I'm using my Caran d'Ache Luminance mostly and I also am using a few of my Polychromos pencils as well. And I'm actually going to create a swatch for you guys before I get into this so you can see which colors that I'm going to be using. There are quite a lot of colors here. You may have seen this drawing in one of my previous videos, but that was at the beginning stages of it. And in this video, I'm going to try and explain how exactly I created this smooth skin look. I did specifically pick out a reference photo that was very warm toned and I wanted there to be a lot of orange in the photo. So this skin tone is going to fall more on the warmer orange side to keep that in mind as I'm showing you guys which colors that I'm using. So here's my swatch chart for this skin tone. Here are my favorite Castell Polychromos and then these are my luminance colors that I'm using. So you can see that there's a lot of burnt orange, yellow, red colors and that helps create the effect here of the orange kind of light coming in and the warm skin tone. And I am using sepia from the Faber-Castell set and black, of course, but sepia first. So there are quite a few browns from the Faber-Castell set that I'm using. And then Venetian red and medium flush, I'm using just a teeny bit to bring out some pink tones in certain areas, but very minimal on that. I'm using burnt ochre quite a lot from the Polychromo set. Now notice that the burnt ochre from the Polychromo set is different from the one from the Luminance set, and same with the burnt sienna. So me using both of these, there's a reason for that, it's because they are still slightly different, so it benefits me to use them from both sets. I'm also using terracotta from the Luminance set, and this is helping me to get some of those red shadows, as well as these darker burnt red colors for the deeper shadows. And I have a couple of off-whites here as well, including buff titanium, and I even have raw sienna, which I'm using just a little bit to bring out some yellow. I want to be careful with that one, and I don't want to overdo it. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this is 18 colors in all, including the white and the black, of course, and not including what I was using for the irises, of course, in the eyes, but we're just talking about skin tone here. I used 18 colors in all with both sets combined. So that being said, I hope that this helps any of you out if you're looking to create a similar skin tone to the one I've created here. And let's actually jump into the tutorial portion of this video now. So through this video, I'm going to work on various areas of the face. You can see that even though I finished the nose almost and I've worked a lot on the cheeks and the eyes, I haven't even touched the area around the mouth. So at this point it is white and this way you guys will kind of be able to see the stages of coloring skin from start to finish. So when I'm shading or coloring skin, I like to use more like circular or oval motions with my pencil while I'm coloring. And I like to avoid any linear motions that would create any kind of pencil marks or line marks. The reason for this is because I want the skin to look seamless and smooth and I want everything to blend in together very nicely unless I'm specifically working on an area that has a crease or a wrinkle or an outline then I'm going to avoid any kind of linear pencil strokes. I like to start with a very light layer and then build upon that. So as you can see, I'm using some of my lighter pencils here on the underside of the chin, as well as some of the darker ones for shadowed areas in particular. And I just continue to layer and build up until I'm happy with the result. And then what I like to do is slowly fade into my highlights. I don't want them to be too harsh. So I'm going to slowly fade into them by using less pressure when I'm coloring around those areas that are highlights. And then the lighter pencil sort of just fades into the white highlight. My highlights are not going to be left 100% completely white either. I will use my white pencil a bit, but I might use buff titanium or another off-white to help give a little depth to my highlighted areas. Thank you. 
When I'm working on shadowed areas, I like to slowly build up to them and include multiple colors, even if the main color seems to be, let's say, a dark brown. I still want to include some other colors underneath, like the regular colors of the skin, to make sure that there is depth to it and that it blends in with the rest of the skin. You don't want the color of the shadow to contrast or contrast the skin tone so much that it doesn't even look like it blends in together. You definitely want it to look like it's part of the same skin tone. So layering is the best way to get this effect, I find. And with the luminance, which are just so creamy, it's easy to layer and blend colors seamlessly together. As I mentioned, when I have an area that's very highlighted, I want to work around it in a way where the colors sort of just fade into that highlight rather than have it look harsh and unnatural. You'll also see me use Primrose or Buff Titanium, which are both off-white sometimes, to make the highlights look more natural. I just slowed this clip down to show you how it looks in real time as I'm using the side of my pencil often to avoid creating any harsh marks and kind of just um, coloring in loose circular motions. So with the skin, for some reason the layering process seems to just take so so long. I kind of just call it rendering where you continue going over a certain area for a while until it looks fleshed out enough because with colored pencils, unlike something like graphite for example, with colored pencils you really have to build the colors on top of one another to achieve that depth. And you're not just worried about value, but you're worried about color as well which just makes things more complicated. And so it takes a lot of layering for me to get a skin tone and a lot of colors. A common misconception amongst newer artists or artists who aren't used to working in color is that skin tones are easy because you only need to use two or three different colors that look like the skin tone that you're trying to color in. But in reality, no matter what type of skin tone the reference photo that you're using, the person in the reference photo has, you're going to need a lot of different colors because there's going to be shadows, highlights, and undertones throughout. And the faster that you learn that, I think the better you'll become at portraits. When I started out with skin tones, I would only use the tones I thought were skin tones, like for example, light peach colors for a lighter skin tone, or just a couple of browns for a darker skin tone, and I didn't think too much about the depth and the undertones. In reality, even when you're working on a lighter skin tone, you'll need to have darker browns. When you're working on a darker skin tone, you'll need to have lighter tones as well for highlights. Another tip I would give you guys is not to overdo it with your shadow tones, and I don't mean in shadowed areas where the shadows do get quite dark, but as you're covering the rest of the skin and trying to really flesh it out and layer, don't make the mistake of accidentally layering too many of the darker shadow colors in areas where you actually want there to be more of a mid-tone. So in areas where there's more of a mid-tone, like let's look at the left side of the face in this particular drawing, you can see that it's a lot lighter than the right side where there's that really dark red shadow and I'd like to keep it that way so I'm not going to use those darker red colors very much on that side of the face. I might use them a little bit for some of the shadowed areas but I don't want to ruin the contrast and I don't want the picture to turn out too dark where it isn't supposed to be. I'm going to start working on the forehead now from start to finish. It's literally a blank slate at this moment, so you'll really be able to see some of the different stages that this area goes through as I build upon it. So to begin with, I am very light with the pressure I'm using. A lot of the color isn't showing up too much. You can see how there's a highlight on the left side of the forehead as well as a little bit on the right side, and those areas I'm leaving quite light and I'm letting any other colors sort of fade in. You can see that I'm already getting a pretty smooth look and that is because I'm not using those linear pencil strokes and I'm very careful to color in circular motions as I showed you guys earlier when I slowed down the video clips. So as I am working layer over layer, you start to be able to see that skin tone darkening up a bit and coming through a little bit more on camera. 
and then I can start to work on a little more heavily shadowed areas like right above the eyebrows and add in some darker color there and just have it naturally fade into the rest of the skin and the rest of the colors and since this area doesn't have a whole lot of contrast in comparison to an area like the nose or the right cheek, I'm going to be careful here not to make my shadows look too, too dark. Also keep in mind that the colors I'm actually using the most in this picture are Burnt Ochre 10% and Burnt Ochre 50%, which are two mid-tones from the Luminance set that are sort of the mid-tone for this particular skin tone. What I'm trying to say is that if you're working on a lighter or darker skin tone than this, you're going to have different mid-tones, of course, but for this particular skin tone, those two were the most neutral and mid-tone colors that work. And if I were to use too much of, for example, the raw sienna, which is very yellow, then it's going to just look off. I'm only using my raw sienna to bring out some of those more yellow toned areas, but I definitely do not want to use it over the entirety of the portrait or as one of my main colors because that'll mess up the entire skin tone and make it look a little bit unnatural. I'm going to continue fleshing out that area and building up layers. You can see it's really starting to come together at this point. And when I get to this point, I can add more pressure to my paper because I'm getting close to my last layers. You don't want to do this too soon or you won't be able to add more layers, of course. And you can use your white or off-white pencil over the highlighted areas as well to sort of add more pressure and smooth them out a bit if you would like to. Alright you guys, that's about it for today's video. I'm going to continue releasing a few more videos on this particular portrait so that way I can focus in on specific things that I'm doing and make videos about that. Otherwise, if I make one big video, it's just going to have to be sped up so much because of the hours that go into something like this. But if you like how this is turning out, let me know in the comments down below. If you wish to see the real-time version, this is going to be up on my Patreon, a link in my description. My Patreon is quite new and I'm just starting to add some content to it. So if you're interested in that, the link is down below. And I think that's about it. So thank you guys so, so much for watching as always. Any comments are welcome down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.